Hello and welcome back. Today we will be taking a look at Windows XP Unofficial Service Pack 4. This is a install of Windows XP Home Edition, the original release of RTM. I can show you here as Man Prompt was last thing I accessed, which is Microsoft Windows version 5.1, build 2, 600, XP client, 0 .01, 0 .08. Well, uh, August 1st, 20, actually, August 17th, 2001, at 11.48, copyright 1981 to 2001, so this is the original one, I don't know what the 11.48 is, and that is the, EULA, so, Next, we're going to do a time lapse of installing the three service packs, even though all you need is service pack one, and then we'll install this thing right here. This service pack was created in order to kind of like give up, give all the updates to Windows XP closer and closer to when Windows XP was about to uh, lose support. So, let's get on to installing the updates. So I began with installing Service Pack 1, which used a like a website interface to install from, which I found kind of cool, and it took a little bit. Though, so, check around the system, see what it was like before the uh, Service Pack had finished installing. And then I just waited because I was going to copy all of its good old files. And finished quite quickly. <laughs> I like that noise. The speedy start noise. So, I was back in Windows XP now. No. It's decided I'm gonna go straight for Service Pack 2, which also was pretty quick to install. So it installed from a more graphical interface rather than a HTML file that would open up in Internet Explorer, which I kinda like the Internet Explorer interface because it's kind of cool. It's just kind of cool. Though it took a while. It didn't take too long to install. Though. So. And I decided to, I would do a little housekeeping on the desktop while it installed. Just, was the desktop on the virtual machine was pretty much just a mess. It was a mess, not a good mess. So, one more restart, and this actually reboots back into the out of box experience once it restarts. So, we are. It opens up Security Center, so. And I just checking some stuff out, see what it was like, and then I went on to installing Service Pack 3, which didn't take as long. I don't know. It was taking a while looking at the timeline. Though, I did like Service Pack 3 as it kind of changes the copyright date in Linver, which. I always found kind of shocking though. Surf Pack 3 was released in 2008, a year after Windows Vista was released, which I also find surprising. And that's the reason why I wanted to install the first three service packs is to show you the installers for all three of them basically. Service Pack 4 kind of uses the installer from Service Pack 3 rather than Service Pack 2 or Service Pack 1. So, majority of the system, as you'll find out, will still resemble Service Pack 
three rather than service pack two. So yeah. Now we're back with Windows XP having all three service packs installed now, and you say Windows XP service pack three. And before we get to the star of today's video here, once you can see now that we know what Windows XP RTM was like, let's see what Windows XP Service Pack 3 was like before going to comparis comparing with the unofficial Service Pack. We would like to see the comparison here. So we can go to Control Panel. And I know one thing I know about this Service Pack, it changed the copyright date to, to from 2001 to 2007. And to remove programs and viewer updates and uninstall service pack 3 which that's the only time I can really uninstall it though this identifies itself as service pack 3 pretty much all over the system and it still will so you'll see the installer in pretty soon alright let's get to it So the installation for Service Pack 4 was took a little longer though because it was probably a lot much, much larger. The installer file for Service Pack 3 is only 300 megabytes. Service Pack 2 is 500. Service Pack 1 was like 280 or something, and so. But Service Pack 4, the unofficial Service Pack, was about 900 gigabytes. Because it was a lot of updates. Installing Internet Explorer 8 and stuff like that. BitLocker to go, I think, is was one of them. So the Eula, which I wanted to show you, but for some reason I skipped over. Actually is a lot different as it was talking about how it's not actually by Microsoft but the installer though really resembles Microsoft's Windows XP Service Pack 3 installer window though as installing did take a bit of time though it was a lot quicker than I thought it was going to be because when I was testing this off camera it took forever and then Explorer would hang after the reboot. This so now we're back and much better it than still says Windows, Windows XP Service Pack 3 much better. which I kind of find interesting though so we continue on to Windows here and let's see let me type in my password to log into Windows let me try the game for press two keys at the same time which is not a good idea and we get that nice sound. And it's a lot taking a lot longer than most of the time. Let's see what's going on. Whoa. Alright. Wow. Well that's just changing. For the non animated, so we don't end up getting copyrighted. Issues. See you later. I know, wow. Let's see. Uh, so look, didn't know that that looked that much different when you're using a later service pack. I was messing around with it earlier. So, fairly, fairly interesting here. I already knew you could upload photos to MSN in 2001. And play gaming. Using DirectX and connected home and office. Let's see the. I'm just seeing a lot of stuff that's here in this tutorial here. 
I really never paid much attention to them. So, it was pretty interesting to look at. So, let's see what's else going on here. We got a new version of Internet Explorer. And pretty much got a lot of updates. Like a lot of updates. Including programs like BitLocker to Go, which I don't think that will work. BitLocker to Go Reader is something designed for Windows XP. I don't believe XPS Viewer was here before, and now we got XPS Viewer. That allows me to read XPS files. Something in Windows 7, I think. I just opened up the same program. Good for me. Now everything's frozen. Not in the world. I don't know what EP stands for. Great. Goodness gracious. It's bad and weird. So don't I think we had remote desktop stuff here. Which, and we also have WordPad, which is kind of cool. It updates Internet Explorer to Internet Explorer 8.0, which was the last version of Internet Explorer to work on Windows XP. And so, which this came with, and I just clicked on something and now everything's frozen. This is. Sure. Goodbye. Though the uh, operating system seems to be pretty usable. Go to control panel, look at our new program, and it says. Here, well, Windows XP Service Pack 4. New programs, Windows Components, which is a thing, still a modern version of Windows, and Access Defaults. Which you can set custom. Not Microsoft. This is just going to do its own thing. So, not much is different. Though it was pretty useful for if you wanted to keep Windows XP for around for a couple more years. And finally it works. And so you didn't want to, like, give it up for a while and you wanted to be secure and stuff. This is pretty much like every update that was released for Windows XP. Though. And uh, I hope you did enjoy this video, and I'll guess I'll see you in the next one then.